Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. When the patient is, uh, has been getting blood transfusions and by one of the various tests we described, it is determined that there is iron overload present, then it is important to consider treatment of iron overload, which is of course called iron chelation therapy or ICT. Um, there are multiple uh, drugs that are available and have been used in the past, uh, but uh, uh, more recently, the, the important advance in this area has been the introduction of oral iron chelators. And two of these that are available um, have uh, are being used more and more commonly. And um, in fact, some of the most dramatic uh, improvements in survival in chronically transfused patients with diseases like thalassemia and sickle cell anemia uh, have come from the profound improvements that have been made in survival of these patients just because of introduction of iron chelation therapy that's readily available through these oral agents. So in terms of treatment, there are two oral chelators that are available. The first is Feriprox, which is approved as second-line treatment for thalassemia. And Feriprox, because it has occasionally been associated with a side effect of agranulocytosis, and in the past there was some concern about acceleration of hepatic fibrosis with it, which subsequent studies have not shown to be uh, the case, uh, but it's not uh, more, more. It's not commonly used in myelodysplastic syndromes. In my practice, for myelodysplastic syndromes patients, the drug that I used as uh, a very effective iron chelator is uh, Xjade. Uh, it has really changed the way uh, I have been treating lower risk MDS patients because it's made it so much more palatable and simple uh, to institute uh, iron chelation now. Uh, and when, you are, when we are seeing patients with lower risk MDS who are getting chronically transfused, it is very, very important to initiate iron chelation therapy early to continue it, bring down the ferritin level to a desirable um, uh, limit, and uh, even stop the chelation, uh, let it build back once again when uh, patients are getting transfused, and reinitiate. So even episodic and intermittent chelation is extremely important uh, for our patients.